In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper two of the 2024 Leave and Cert Ordinary Level exam. If you are looking for a different question from this paper, you should find a link to a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing in the classroom. But remember, this isn't a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Use the pause button, rewind, fast forward, watch it in high speed or slow speed, whatever helps you out. And if you do find this video or any of my videos useful, I would appreciate like, subscribe, all that stuff. What really helps out the channel the most is though, sharing it with someone that might find it useful. In question seven, they give us a table of information that has the heart rate of certain people before exercise and after exercise. I, I won't bother writing the table out and save my ink. Um, but the, for question A, part one, they ask you to complete a back-to-back -back STEM diagram. And they've started off for you something like this. And they want to put the information from the table into this. Now, in that table, in the before exercise, there was the number 60. And that's where we get six, zero. There's also, let me just check my notes here, there's also a 65, so that's where we get a 6, 5, there's a 67, 6, 7, and there's a 68. And that's what a stem and leaf uh, diagram looks like. Uh, for the after exercise, for example, there's a 71 and there's a 79. Let me just edit out filling in the rest, uh, just like that. Um, some hints for doing this. Try and keep your numbers in order. It doesn't matter too much. If you had a row to uh, 0, 7, 5, 8, you're fine. You're not going to lose marks. But sometimes, it's usually, I find it's usually better to keep them in order like this. Also, try and keep them in line, uh, one number on top of each other. Because uh, later in this question, we are going to use the shape of this image uh, to help us answer it. Um, you, you should still get the idea no matter what you do, but still, it's, that's just good practice. Now for part two, they remind us the numbers they gave us. This is the after exercise numbers. Uh, they write it out like this. And they simply ask us to work out the mean and the standard deviation. Now, your calculator can do all this. In fact, standard deviation, uh, you can do it by hand. I'll show you quickly how you would do it. I won't finish it, uh, but for this sort of question, it'd be very difficult and long to do by hand the standard deviation. The mean wouldn't be too bad. You just add all these numbers up, uh, 71 plus 81 and so on. Add them all up and divide by how many, there's 10 of them here, divide by 10. And you would get an answer of 93.3. Uh, now your calculator will do that. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials online. Everyone calculator is different, so I recommend Look up the name of your calculator, the, even the, the numbers that are over this side, and um, look up stats or tutorial for stats or finding the mean, finding the standard deviation. It's actually very handy and can save you a lot of time in the exam. And you should, I should get this, but it's difficult. Uh, I, I also recommend asking your teacher, somebody that can sit down with your calculator with you and figure it out, because it's not easy. I have my, for my own calculator, I think I spent 10, 20 minutes figuring it out. So it's not necessarily easy. So I won't do it because uh, you all have different calculators. Uh, but um, using this method or the calculator, I use the calculator to get this number, 93.3. That's the average number. Looks about right. Uh, to get the standard deviation is, oh, it's a lot more difficult. You need to get this number first and find the difference of this to this. So for example, the difference of 93.3 the 71 is um, 22.3. And you need to do this for all of them. Uh, this would be, I'm just doing this in my head, so bear with me, it's like 14.3. And you get all of these numbers here. And then you have to square them. So you need to square all these numbers. And then you need to get the average of all of those, just like you would here. So 22.3 squared is whatever it is. I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, 500 or so. Um, this squared, you add all these together and divide by 10. And then you get the square root of that number and that would be your standard deviation. Much easier though, your calculator will tell you. It'll do all the work for you. And it told me it's 15.1. That's rounded to the nearest one decimal place. Uh, part three of this question asks, it says, based on your stem and leaf graph that's over here, how has the standard deviation changed 
from before exercise to after exercise. Now, I'll tell you the answer first. The answer is it has increased. So how can I tell that? It's how much it's stretched out. You see this here, it's just up and down. It's tree long, basically. Whereas this guy goes up, it doesn't go up as high, that's fine. But then it goes uh, five long. Uh, just to make that clearer, let's, let me t tilt these on the side. This guy will look like this. Um, it doesn't quite look like this, but just, just roughly looks like that. That standard deviation is about here, between these two points. This guy is a lot longer. Let's uh, draw that over here as well. It comes up um, and it doesn't, it doesn't go as high, but it goes on for longer. It's standard deviation. It's just much, much I, don't, I don't know what the numbers are, but it's much more. Um, and just one more time, just to be clear. Remember the standard deviation, there's the middle. One standard deviation is about here. Two standard deviations about here. Three is about here. One standard deviation means 68% in the middle. And two standard deviations mean 95% in the middle. And three standard deviations means 99.7 uh, is in the middle. Okay, more stretched out though. Standard deviation, more stretched more stretched. more stretched it is, the more standard deviation. The less stretched it is, the less standard. For example, uh, this would have very small standard deviation. It would be really narrow. And uh, this one here would have a really big standard deviation. Okay, so that would be the answer to that part. For part uh, four, they graph the heart rate before versus the heart rate after. Down here is the heart rate before. On this side was the heart rate after. For example, at this point down here, I'm reading off the actual graph. Mine doesn't look uh, right. Uh, is 60 here and 70 here. So this person had a, oh, sorry, pen is run now. This person had a heart rate of 60 before and 70 after. And that's um, the same for all of them. Like uh, this person here, somewhere, somewhere over here had 90 before and, 110 after, or roughly thereabouts. This is called a scatter graph. Uh, we use these to tell how correlated one bit of information is to the next. Does knowing um, the heart rate before affect the answer after? That's, uh, that's basically what we're looking for here. Interestingly, your calculator can do all of this. Uh, you can put all these numbers in calculator, 60, 70 as a combined number. Um, and whatever else all the other ones were. Just uh, link them all off, um, which you can read from the graph here. Actually, I think they tell you, yeah, the first table they give you was uh, subject A and both the heart rates. So you could put all this into your calculator and it would just tell you the coefficient. Um, and that's what they're asking here. They give you four values, uh, minus eight, let me just write them down, minus eight, uh, sorry, minus 0 0.8, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0. Uh, nine. Let me ask you which of these is the correct answer. Again, like I said, the calculator, you'd, it'd take you a while to put the numbers in, uh, but the calculator would tell you one of these as an answer. Um, much, much quicker to do what I'm going to show you now. Uh, understanding. Understanding what the correlation is. Uh, when, when it looks like a straight line, when, when the dots go, let, let me show you one that doesn't look like a straight line. That's just random noise. I do not see any lines in there. Human brains are really good at seeing patterns. I don't see a pattern, and maybe there is, but I don't see a pattern. The coefficient of this one would be close to zero. This one here, I see a pattern. I see some sort of line coming through like that. And if you see a perfect line, uh, for example, oh, let me, yeah, for example, something like that, a perfect line, that's coefficient would be close to one, or uh, maybe minus one. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, close to one though. So first of all, I would say this guy is um, close to being a line. So I don't think it should be close to zero. I don't think it should be close to zero. I think it should be close to one or, or maybe minus one. I think one of these two is a correct answer. So is it plus or minus? And that simply is whether it's going up or going down. This guy is going up, so it should be a positive. It's definitely a positive, in fact. Uh, so the only one it could be really is, it couldn't be this minus or this minus. So it could be one of these two now, but I already ruled this out because I think it looks too good. 
it looks uh, pretty close to a line. So I might correct that. My answer would be 0 0.9. I think it, it's a good correlation and it's a positive correlation. It's going up. Okay, on to part B. In part B, they talk about a ran random sample of 355 people was picked from everyone who took part in a park run in uh, 2023 in Galway. Um, show that for this sample, the margin of error uh, of, the, of a population proportion is 5.3%, correct to the first decimal place. Now, uh, for this question, you will find some help in your tables book. There is a statistics section. It does talk about uh, population and proportion and stuff. But honestly, it, it, this book is also for honors level students and for college level students. And uh, even past that for statistics. Um, so you can get in a bit of trouble following what's in there because it's too complex for you. That's my first warning. My second bit of warning is I never liked statistics. I was never that good at it. Um, usually I double check my answers versus the, the, the marking scheme, which doesn't seem to be out yet. So unfortunately you've just got me. So bear that in mind, I could make a mistake in this question. Okay, with that in mind, what they've said here is they took 355, sorry, 55 people out of a population of, we don't know, maybe 10,000 people did a park run in Galway. They took this many people and they asked them questions. So they work out what their margin of error is. And how you work that out is, you see this in, um, in newspapers all the time when there's a poll of the, like the population of Ireland is 5 million and they usually ask about 1,000 people. And they have a, a margin of error at the end. A, a, what do they call it? Margin of error for a population proportion. And how you find that is you take how many people you ask 355 and you get the square root of that and you divide this by the actual number 355 and if you put that into a calculator you will get 5.3% uh, uh, sorry you'll, you'll actually get 0 0.053 whatever um, because uh, well, that's the same number these, these two are the same number percentage just multiplied by 100 so, th so that's the answer to part one and like this number is used um, any answer we get, which we will see this later in the question, but any answer you get, you have to be worried about. It's your because you only ask three hundred fifty-five people, and this this is telling you a good way to um, estimate how much you should be worried. Yeah, so your answer is probably off by this much. Okay, and um, going on to part two. In part two, they say uh, ninety-six out of the three hundred fifty-five people finished the race ran in under 25 minutes. Work out the percentage of runners in the sample who finished the park run in under 25 minutes. Well, that's simple enough. Uh, it's 96 divided by 355. So if you put that into a calculator, you should get 0. Point, just checking my notes, 0. 0.27. Um, yeah, it's something like 0. 0.4, something like that. Multiply that by 100, we get 27.04 rounded to one decimal place because that's what the other one uh, that's what we did here and uh, we get 27 percent so 27 percent of this sample size uh took was it um yeah yeah it was uh, they finished in under 25 minutes 27 percent of this sample size but be careful that doesn't tell you what happened to everyone in 2023 because remember there's probably tens of thousands of people do that so we have to bring this margin of error in if we want to think about that. And that's what, that's what we'll get to in part three. In part three, uh, they tell us that in 2019, 24% of runners, and that's, they tell us, yeah, I think they tell us this is the correct answer. This is definitive. 24% in 2019 finished in under 25 minutes. And they said that the, the number has changed in 2023. It's 27%. So are they right? Has it changed? Is 24 different than 27? It seems easy, doesn't it? It seems, of course it's changed. It was 24, now it's 27. But that's, that's where we have to be careful. This is not a correct answer. This is our best guess, just by asking 355 people. This guess, if we were more accurate with this guess, it should be plus or minus this. 27 plus or minus 5.3. Or to put that in other words, um, have I done them here? 21.7% uh, 
or 32.3%. So really, what over here actually told us about 2023 is, we think 27% uh, people did it in under 25 minutes, but we think our margin of error is 5.3%. So we really think this is our answer. Somewhere between 21 and 32. Newspapers just often print this number. But what they should print is, is this number here. Somewhere between these two. So, in fact, the person who said the numbers changed. No, I don't, I don't agree with them. It was 24. And it might still be 24. We don't know. It's somewhere in here. Well, our best guess is it's somewhere. It might actually be out. Like, surveys are often wrong. Um, but our best guess is it's somewhere in here. So, no, I, I don't think it has changed. Or I, I can't say for sure it has changed. And, and that's the answer, something, something like that. Okay, that's all for question seven. If you have any questions or corrections, because again, I could be wrong. Like, um, I tried to look it up, but it seems that this is how it's done. Um, but for example, I would have thought 5.3% of, uh, maybe I shouldn't add it, maybe I shouldn't multiply it. But like I said, I'm not really that good at statistics. This is my best opinion of what I think the answer is. Um, but you would help out a lot if you corrected me. I, um, in fact, if I'm really wrong, I'll take the video down and remake it. Um, but hopefully I'm not. And either way, until next time, thanks for watching. Have a good day.